Welcome everyone, I am so happy to share this tutorial with you all where you will learn how to use Node.js to create an Amazon monitor that can track if multiple items are in stock or out of stock. You will learn how to use Node.js libraries, vanilla JavaScript, and HTTP request handling to create something very cool. And by the way, you do not need any prior coding experience to create this. Also, did I mention that you can sell this program for literally hundreds of dollars right after you create it? So get your favorite drink, put on that lo-fi music, get your laptop, and let's get coding. So the first step of developing this monitor is to first install the necessary resources to actually create everything. So the first thing we're going to need to install is Node.js. So I'm personally using a Mac, so for this I would just go on the Mac OS installer, click this link, and you'll see the Node.js package underneath. I'll click it, and it'll take me through the steps of downloading Node.js and you can see NPM is included within the download. Now, I already have Node.js, so there's really no point of me doing this, so I'll just X right here, but you would basically just wanna press continue, um, continue, uh, agree, and all the way forward. And once that is done, you want to go to a Visual Studio Code, go to Visual Studio Code, you want to go to a folder that you made on your desktop right here. I made an empty folder. I opened it in a VS Code. Let me minimize that. And now what you're going to do is you're going to create a new file, okay? Let's name this uh, amzn for amazon.js, all right? Now quickly to check that you have everything installed properly, what you want to do is you want to run, uh, well, to check and to actually make everything work, you want to run npm install. And you see you have package-lock.json, package.json. You want to make sure these two uh, files are within the file view. If they're not there, things will not work. And you also run npm in it. Okay, and just keep it, just press enter all the way through. Um, yes, and that's that. Okay, so now if you have run npm install already and everything worked out, then that means you have successfully installed Node.js, which is what we want. Now what we're going to do is we're going to install a second library, I mean our first library, and that is called got. So we're literally going to say npm install got, which sounds a little you know crazy, but that's the library name. So we'll do constant got equals required got. Now you guys may be wondering, um, what is what is got? So let's check out what got exactly is. Got library npm. Okay. So got library is a well. Let's let this load. Uh, it's basically a library that's used to uh, handle HTTP requests and responses. Um, maybe if you guys have experience, you've probably used Axios or you've used maybe the request library. Um, Axios is another very famous uh, library used to uh, handle requests and send requests and get requests and process them within Node.js. But personally, we'll be using GOT for this monitor simply because I'm more used to it and I just like it way more. So it's very easy to use and we're using this for the entire project. So make sure you have everything installed. Um, let's quickly just run something simple to make sure we have um, got library installed properly. You see, if this is not installed properly, it's probably gonna crash and it will print out hello world. So let's do node amzn.js. There you go, hello world. So everything is installed and we can move on. All right, so now that we have everything installed, Let's actually find the request, the master request that we will be using to actually create this entire monitor, okay? So in order to do that, what we have to do is we have to go to Amazon. I have this product link already set. If I go to this link, you see we will be looking at this 2020 flagship HP 14 Chromebook laptop. You can see right now, it says there's 14 left in stock. We're not really worrying about that. But what we need to see is what request should we ping, should we send to Amazon's server and return like the HTML of the page, right? Now, if you see my previous course, you've, you've seen that I've used Puppeteer in the past. I would not be using Puppeteer for this project. This would be purely request-based. So what I have to do is somehow get this HTML right here because usually in Amazon, when a product is in stock, it'll say in stock. When it's out of stock, it'll say out of stock. And when it's limited stock, like in this case, it will say only X amount of items left in stock. In this case, X is 14, right? So what we're gonna be looking at is whether this says in stock, out of stock, or has a limited uh, quantity. Um, if it says in stock or limited quantity, that means in stock, um, 
well, is valid. So we really only care about if it's in stock, no matter how many are left or out of stock. So again, what request will give us that information, right? What request will return the HTML that we will need to, uh, to parse? So the way we do that is we go to network on Chrome DevTools. So make sure you have Chrome. If you don't have Chrome, things are really not gonna work. Now, what you want to do is quickly just clear everything. Now, you want to refresh this page and pay attention to the requests that are being sent through. Um, again, clear that. Let's re refresh. Now we go to the real top. Okay, okay. See, there's a lot of so many requests are coming through. Now I'm trying to scroll up and it's just not working. Okay, so the request that's going to matter, right? That's going to return to HTML of this page is the request sent to this right here. Okay, the request sent to this URL, this endpoint, is what's going to. Uh, its response is what's going to have the HTML that we're going to parse, be parsing. So let's look at it. Um, is this it? No, is it? No, no. Okay, look right here, right here. So we maximize this. We see this is the URL that we are currently on. So this is the request URL. Good. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to basically copy these request headers and use them and mimic the same exact request within the code. Now I'll show you guys how this looks like. Um, so we're going to do, this, let's do this. So, um, okay, oh. Constant response equals uh, await got, oh, let's make an async function real quick. So async, async function monitor. In it, what we're going to do is got, uh, let's copy this link. If there's a product link, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in this product link. Okay. Now, and then we're, we'll uh, console.log response.status code. Now, the status code is basically what lets you know whether the request was valid or not. Usually, a 400 plus status code means that like, you failed. A 200 or 201 means you're good. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do. Now it's called monitor, and this actually should not work, and there's a reason I don't want it to work. It definitely shouldn't work. Oh, it worked. So after further inspection, I realized that right now, this request will work, simply because Amazon isn't really having on high, like it's not on high security alert right now, but when the time matters, when like you know a high stake item like PS5 is dropping, or or the new RTX cards, or some Pokemon cards even nowadays are dropping, Amazon security will be heightened, and a simple request like this just won't work. So I know you guys probably were like, "Oh, it's just this easy." It's not this easy. I was surprised myself, but it's not like that. So what we have to do is we actually have to pass in headers. Now we'll call the variable my headers, and Let's say var my headers equals, and then we're gonna have some headers. All right. So what's happening right here is we're passing in the headers that we will be creating um, into the request. And now, what are these headers? You see right here, now these request headers right here. This basically gives your request to the server more validity and makes your request seem more like a from an actual browser, an actual person, not a program or a bot. So what we're going to have to do is copy some of this information, not the cookies obviously, because uh, cookies will be generated through the browser and stuff. We're not gonna be worrying about that, but we're going to just be copying these request headers. So let's do that now. All right, so I cut to the part of where I have everything written in because it's gonna be really boring uh, going through all those headers and copying it down. But you can see right here, I have all the headers. You can pause the video right now just to like, copy this information down. Um, see right here. For the, for the U agent, I just got my browser's U agent, so all I do is quickly Google search, um, what is my user agent? And then I just copy this into the user agent right here. So moving on, um, I, have the, my, I have my headers copied down, um, all the appropriate headers I need, and then I'll pass it into here, and now I'll make the request again. And it should still work, if anything, it should work better now. Um, Node Amazon. There you go. Status 200. So I'll do it again. 
just to make sure nothing broken that's 200 now i know you guys like i said are probably like well it worked before too why does it matter when a product that's really in demand is dropping um security is heightened guys and trust me you don't want to just be relying on uh, a simple get request without even passing in headers it's just not going to work trust me so that is why we create our own headers using basically the exact same information from the request sent via the browser that way you look like a real browser and that's all we got to do so if you look back at right here right we have constant response equals a weight got product link headers my headers okay so you pass in the headers and now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure the response one is there it's not no right and we want to check the status code the status code tells us like i said if the um, request was sent successfully or not and the status code return is a 201 um, so we're going to check if it equals 201 if so then we're going to move forward um, actually it equals 200 okay so now at this point we need to parse the html so how do we even get the html first of all well the response object it returns in its body the html from the request that's sent so what we're going to do now is we're going to just log this um, let's just let's open the terminal show you guys what i mean um okay it's taking some time but look at that you see all the html that just came up who is going to parse all that right like it looks half first of all it looks like gibberish second of all if you scroll all the way up you'll see that it's just a bunch of you know text and parsing this will be insane if you don't have some extra help so let's get that extra help and how are you gonna do that well right here we're gonna install a, a package called a node uh, HTML parser so npm install node HTML parser so now that we have it installed what we're going to do now is we're going to do constant HTML parser is equal to require uh, oops node HTML parser there you go okay so now if the response object is there and status code is successful what we're going to do is we are going to set let root equal to html parser dot parse response dot body okay so now what this is doing is it's basically making this library uh parse an entire response body so now accessing the html elements will be such an easy thing and i'll show you right here so we have the HTML of this page, okay? And now going back to the, the HTML for this segment right here, which you're gonna be needing to actually get the stock of the product, or check its availability. We see right here, um, let's look at that. There's a div right here, okay? Div ID equals availability. So we're going to grab this div and use it to get the actual text um, that says in stock, out of stock, or only X amount in st uh, left in stock. So in order to do that, so let's copy the, the ID real quick. Availability. Okay, so let avail availability div equal root dot query selector. Oops. Root dot query selector. Um, now we're going to pass in the to do okay so now what this is is this availability div basically represents this html right here all right so everything inside of it and the div object itself the div element itself so once we validate the availability div actually does exist what we're going to do is we're going to get the html the inner text of this element right here okay the span class and how are we going to do that well let's do this first to document.get element by id availability okay so we got the uh the html element right what we're going to do is we're going to access its child nodes right it's children in order to do that we just call it child nodes and we see its nodes right and we see right here um look at one you see okay so the inner text property is of the second child okay so it's at one so we're going to do right here, you're going to do let um, in stock, or let stock text equal 
availability div dot child nodes um, and get the, the, the second one and then dot get on the inner text there you go so that should be the stock text that we need um, and we're going to make it to lowercase okay so we got the, the stock text right now before we move on um, let's just console.log the stock text let's see if everything is working oh. there you go oh looks like stock went down only 19 left in stock now all right so now at this point you're probably like well now we just have to check the stock text see what it equals and then we're done well that's possible but we're also going to integrate this to discord later on so let's grab some other details real quick okay so first things first let's do let product name equal so right here we're gonna, we're gonna get the name of the product um uh let's see so let's do the product name equal product link dot substring um product link dot index of and we're in the index of um, com slash okay so the product name is obviously right here right um, this part right here so we're going to get the com slash so that's uh, say this is zero so one two three four so oops plus four and we're gonna do dot index of uh, slash dp okay so what this is going to do is it's going to grab the name of the product which is in between this com slash and the slash dp okay so we're going to need that for later uh, when we create our webhook for discord so it's good just to grab that information right now but let's quickly just um, validate stock text and print a in stock or out stock method so if stock text equals equals um, out of stock console.log out of stock else console.log in stock okay so now let's uh, do this and you'll see there you go the item is in stock so now that we have our out of stock and in stock printing properly what we're going to do is make sure our monitor method runs constantly and doesn't run just once because essentially we're always going to need our monitor to keep monitoring the URL. So we're going to do we're going to do um, uh, await our set timeout. Uh, let's do uh, eight seconds. Okay. Uh, whoops. Wait, you promise. R. There you go. Um, and then we're going to call monitor again with the console.log. Okay. Oh, return false. So what this is doing is after it monitors right here, checks if it's in stock or out of stock, it's going to wait for eight seconds, right? And that's going to call itself again. So then it remonitors the link, which is what we need. And yeah, so that way this will forever run until we cancel it. So let's quickly make sure that works. Oh, oh I made a silly mistake. I forgot to pass in the R. Um, now let's run it. Okay, so we got in stock. Now it's gonna monitor again after eight seconds. And of course you guys can make it two seconds, three seconds, if you do 2,000 or 3,000. And there you go, it monitors again. And so keep monitoring until we cancel it. So let's cancel it. And that'll be it for this video. So I'll see you all in the next video where we will be going over the prompt sync library, which we will use to get the user input to make sure our monitor can read in whatever link the user wants to monitor. I'm going to give a quick mini lesson on the prompt library, which we'll be using for the next video. So it's it'll be very short. So basically what you're gonna have to do is do npm install uh, prompt sync. Okay, now you can do this in your actual code for the, the main project. Uh, constant uh, prompt equals require uh, prompt sync. There you go. Let's copy this over to 
to this. Okay. So basically this library allows you to take in user input. So if I said um, uh, var var gender equals prompt. Now you pick what question you want to ask the user. Are you a male or female? You can say M male and then F female. Um, okay. And then you can just console.log whatever they say. What this is doing is it's asking you are you male or female and it's letting you know do M for male, F for female. Obviously the user could put something like orange, right? And you, you have to just check to make sure it equals uh, M or F right here. So let's do if gender equals M or gender equals F console.log gender else console.log uh, try again. Okay, so um, let's run it. Let's do node prompt.js. Let's are you asking are you male or female? Let's do uh, male. Actually, let's just quickly. Uh, that's my OCD kicking in. Um, are you male or female? M for male. Then it's going to say M again. Now if I run it again, uh, are you male or female? I say orange. I say try again. So that's what the prompt library does. It basically allows you to ask user input. Very useful. Welcome back everyone. So in this video, we will be creating the run function. Now the run function is basically going to be the, the master method that uh, calls monitor, takes the user input, and basically makes our program what it is. So it's called run. And what we're going to do is we're going to first prompt the user to enter a product link, okay? So let product link equal prompt, um, enter link to monitor. Okay, and um, I should make this so far. Okay, and then what we're going to do is do console.log now monitoring um, and put the product link. Okay, so now we got the product link from the user, and now we asked um, we asked them to enter, to, to enter the link. Or we displayed what they entered, and now what we're going to do is con assuming that the user input a valid product link. Um, what we can do real quick is say if product link dot index of HTTP, just, just, just make sure that we have a, a HTTP, a full URL basically, right? Um, is greater than zero. Then um, console.log, uh, here, move this over here. Else console.log. Error uh, invalid URL. All right, and now what we're going to do is we're going to call monitor, and we're going to pass in the product product link. So what this means is we're going to have to change this, and have, make sure it takes in the argument, and then we call it again over here. Again, pass in product link. Okay. So let's uh, let's call let's call this out so there's no confusion. But let's copy this part. This is the goody goody we need. Um, all right, so we got the run function. Now we just call run. And we're going to add more to this later on in the course, as you guys will see very soon. But for now, this should be plenty. Okay, so let's do node uh, amazon.js. This is say enter the link to monitor. Um, there you go, paste it there. Error invalid URL. Um, oh, oops. So, quick error. If it's greater than or equal to zero, because this is HTTP is the first thing, the index is zero, so you should be checking greater than or equal to zero. Silly mistakes, man, silly mistakes. Okay, paste it, and then say now monitoring the input the product link. And you see it monitored it in stock. Now, after eight seconds, it'll run again. Um, Got a quick wait. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. There you go. And now our monitor successfully takes in the user's input and it takes in the link they want to monitor our program or our monitor is only monitoring one product right 
we want our monitor to monitor multiple products because that's more practical, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to write up some new code to make sure um, our monitor monitors however many products the user wants. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do this. We're going to do product links. Let's rename the variable because we're not we're no longer dealing with only one product product link. We're dealing with multiple. Let's enter links to monitor. Um, okay. So at this point, what we're going to do, since we have project links, right, there has to be some type of way where we can distinguish each link, right? Some type of way the user can input the links so we are able to find a common character that we can split the string and make it to an array. So in other words, we're going to var product links array equals product links dot split uh, comma. So what this does is basically creates an array by splitting each substring that's separated by a comma, right? Now this is assuming that the user separates the links that they want to monitor using a comma. So we can say enter links to monitor separate by comma. Okay. Now the thing is, what if the user inputs this link, right? Let's let's they input a uh, HTTPS um, www google.com with like two spaces afterwards, right? That can mess things up. A puppeteer may not know which what google.com space 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 is. It knows what google.com is, but not google.com space space space, right? So we're going to do we're going to do some pre-processing of our array. So once we have once we have the array of um, links, we're going to do for bar i equals zero. And now you don't have to do this, but I recommend it. And in real world programming, like if you go to like um, any job, they're gonna make sure you do this because you want to validate user input. Um, the user should be smart, right? But you know, we have some knucklehead users sometimes, and when you deal with them, you gotta you gotta dumb it down. So we're gonna do product links array uh, i is equal to product links array oh i dot trim. Okay. This separate this uh, takes out any leading or trailing spaces, right? So com space space would just be com. Okay. Um. Uh, yep. All right. Cool. So we have our code. Okay. Um. Let's just uh, let's test it out. So let's um. Do console dot log. Product links array. Okay. So node Amazon.js. Oh, no. There you go. Okay. So enter links to monitor. Let's just do, uh, let's just pretend the link is uh, Google and space, 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 Yahoo. There you go. See? All the space be in before that came uh, before the Yahoo is now taken out. Right, that's what the trim does, so it makes everything nice and neat. Okay, so we got our product links array set, it's um, pre processed, it's all good. Okay, so now what are we gonna do? All right, how are we gonna make our uh, monitor monitor multiple links? All right, so this is what's gonna happen we're gonna create an array called uh, monitors. Okay, and now for in terms of verbiage, let's just say that uh, one monitor uh, is for one link. So we're making multiple monitors. I know this kind of sounds weird since this is all one grand monitor, but just bear with me. That's what we have, um, call it. Okay. Um, cool. So now we're gonna do product links array dot for each um, link. We're gonna create a promise. Okay. This is an asynchronous operation. Resolve. Reject. Now our return value doesn't really matter for in this case. What we're just gonna do is do monitor, um, link, okay, and then oh resolve monitor link. If you do not understand promises, then there's always tutorials, or I might make one for you guys. Dot catch error, and then if there's an error that occurs, just console dot log error. Okay, cool. So what this is doing is it's getting every single link and it's calling the monitor method on that link, right? Um, so each promise has its own link assigned to it and it's doing its own work at a separate time. 
Now, um, Node.js is single threaded, so like the concept of multi threading isn't like actually there. That's not like C sharp, but you know, this 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 is how close we can get, kind of. All right, so we got that. Now, oh, what we're gonna do right here, actually, we're gonna do monitors dot push a link. So this is doing this is adding it to the array. Now, why are we adding? Um, oh, oops, push p. Sorry. Why are we adding each promise to this array? Well, this monitors is an array of promises. I should have said that before. Array of promises. Okay. And now what we do is we do this call this method await promise dot all settled. This is when all you see right here creates a promise that is resolved within array results when all the provider promises resolve or reject. Now, because our monitor method is infinite, right, it'll always keep running again and again. This will like never stop. Right, this will always be waiting and waiting because they're infinite loop, right? Each monitor is continuously monitoring. So this will ever this will never really return. Okay. And now we do all settled monitors. There you go. Okay. So this is gonna do is like I said, it's gonna be waiting for all the monitors to finish monitoring, which is never gonna happen because we made our method infinite, which is what we want, because you know you don't want to continuously input the command to monitor, you just want to leave your monitor on and get the Discord notification whenever you're, you know, maybe you're doing your homework for school and then, boop, you get the Discord notification and you're like, oh, it's in stock, let me buy it real quick. Okay. Um, and yeah, this is, this should be it. Um, let's see. We don't need this constant log anymore. Okay, but let's, uh, let's actually test this out with valid links. So we have this link right here. Um, let's get another link from Amazon real quick too. So we just need, we just need this part right here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pretend I just do this slash slash. So comma, right? We're separating each link via a comma and then there. Okay. Save this. Now this happens a lot sometimes where when you paste it all of a sudden it like repeats it five times it's like really weird. Personally, I don't know how to fix this. I've been trying to fix this before. If you guys do know how to fix it, then save our lives and comment it in the comment section. Much appreciated. Um, and I press enter. There you go. See, in stock, in stock. Um, it says what here. Actually, let's let's make it a little more clear. Let's make it a little more clear. Let's say here. Uh, product name because we want we want to make sure we know what's what's it talking about, right? There you go. Oh, now I gotta. So we gotta make sure it's monitoring both products. So let's see. Amazon.com in stock. This one's also in stock. You can see right here. Uh, in this case, this link doesn't really have a name. Uh, the product doesn't have a name. Um, we can probably maybe refresh it and get the actual name. No. Okay. So sometimes you the the, the link doesn't have a product name. Then um, that's kind of sad. Most links would have a product name. If it doesn't, then you can just edit the code so it takes this title from the HTML um, from the using the HTML package. That's the thing you guys can do. Um, you know, test it out. So we have this in stock and we have this in stock. So you can see that we're monitoring two different items, which is good, which is exactly what we want. So that's how we make multiple monitors. Let's uh, cancel that. Okay, guys, so we accomplished our goal for this video. We made multiple monitors. In the next video, we will be integrating this into Discord. Welcome back, everyone. So in this video, we will be integrating our monitor into Discord because we want Discord notifications when a product is in stock. Okay, so for this to be accomplished, we're going to be using the Discord webhook node library which is amazing, like it's really amazing. There's a bunch of Discord um, Node.js libraries out there. This is my favorite one. It's very easy to use, very simple. So we're going to do is go to this website right here. Um, so we have to install this. So we do copy that. Let's uh, clear this and do npm install Discord Webhook Node. Okay, so we got it installed, right? Once you got it installed, all you have to do is just copy this part right here. Here, you copy that. You copy this part too. There you go. You can paste this at the real top. All right. Um, 
put that over here. By the way, I did change my link to another item that actually has a name just for uh, simplicity purposes and to, to make everything more clear. But now over here, we're going to have to input our webhook URL. You can get a webhook URL from your own server. Um, personally, I have my own server on Discord. So what I'm going to do is have a channel dedicated for this course because I love this course so much. It is um, yeah, channel, uh, integrations, webhooks, view webhooks. Um, there, copy the URL. And here, now paste it in there. There you go. So right when the program runs, this is already set and everything is good. Okay. So we're going, what things, some global things we want to set for end. And you can, we can use this for reference, right? We, sometimes we want to see exactly what we can do. Here, so let's uh, dot set title, Amazon monitor dot set um, timestamp for sure. Well, timestamp, no matter what. Um, what else do we want? It's <clears throat> color. Let's make the color a light green. Uh, so let's do light green hex. There you go. Let's copy that. Guys, Google is your best friend when it comes to coding. I'm trying to tell you. Google and the stack overflow. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, so you got that. <clears throat> you got some water. Alright, so this is all global stuff you want every single webhook to have. So now we want to edit our webhook depending on, you know, um, what the product is. So we're going to do, we're actually going to go to the website. Let's maximize this. I want our webhook to get the image. I want our webhook to have the image. And you can see right here, there's a, there's a capability. Where did it go? Where, where did it go? Okay. Dot set thumbnail. Yeah, so we're going to have our thumbnail be that. Um, this image right here. So in order to do that, we need to get the image source. And how are we going to do that? Well... Find a find selector for it. Div ID, okay. Okay, so right here. This is it, this is the holy grail. So it's ID is landing image. All right, so let's copy this ID real quick. Copy. Um, all right, so let product image equal, um, let's do root. Uh, query selector landing image dot get attribute source. Okay, this is the oh this is the u product image URL. All right, always name your variables correctly. So when it is in stock, right? We don't really care when it's out of stock. We don't need notifications say hey it's out of stock. Like no one cares. We care about when it's in stock. So we're going to do is we're going to now create our actual webhook, create like the way it looks. All right, so. I have some uh, predefined um, things that I want. So let's do m.set thumbnail. Let me look at the thing. Is it set thumbnail or set image? Um, should be set thumbnail. Yep. A set image is something different, I'm pretty sure. Just set thumbnail. Product image URL. Um, m. Add field, what do we want? We want a field that says uh, as a product name, right? So it's gonna say um, HP laptop, whether it's in stock or whatever, product link, right? Because we want name of the product and a link to the product because that way the user can quickly just go to the product and add it to the car and check it out, right? And do you want a separate field? Like, is it inline? Um, do you want a separate field? Uh, sure, 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 okay. Let's add another field. M dot add field. Oops. Okay. Availability. Availability. Um, in stock. And we want no. We want this one different line. Let's do that. Okay. False. Um. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. So in order to send our hook, how do we send our hook? Uh, right here, hook.send end. Okay, get that. There you go. So when it's in stock, it'll be sent. Um, the webhook URL. Okay. Um, and that should be it. 
Um, yeah, let's run it and test it out. Let's copy that. Open your terminal. Trust me, everyone. The reason I love Node.js so much is the fact that you can use all these libraries, right? Like everything is already made. Like the Discord integration's already there. You can just quickly install it and just use it. It's amazing. We love APIs out here and library. Love it. Okay. Again, ignore this weird error. Like I really wish I knew how to solve this. And real quick, I do want to add something. Um, enter links to monitor. Uh, over here, I want to do um, console.log. Now monitoring, let's do product link array dot length items. So this will say now monitoring three items, now monitoring two items, depending on how many how many ever how many ever product links you put in. Okay. That's just like self preference type stuff. Um, see it is nicer because I don't like seeing the links and then I don't know what's going on. Uh Okay, so it says in stock for both. Okay, so we should have got Discord notification. So let's cancel that. Let's see. Well, we look at that. Will you look at that? Will you look at that? We got our Discord. Look at this. It's beautiful. We got the um, HP Chromebook. So it looks like I wasn't able to get the flagship uh, product image. I was able to get the HP Chromebook. Hmm. We try it again here. Let's let's put let's put one image in. Um. Shoot. Let's make sure. I'll get this. Paste it. Now I'm watching one item. Okay, good. Sometimes Discord is weird when you send multiple um, webhooks in a row. Like it kind of it kind of blends together and gets like really awkward. So yeah, the reason it's not showing the image again is because I think the image is already there for this one. Um, it should be independent. Yeah, that's what that's what it's looking like because it's the same. Like there's no there's no separate monitor or there's no separate webhook that's coming in as the same exact webhook. It's just like overlapping. But that's just a Discord um, limitation, but it's working, right? It's perfect. So you can see the image. It's available. It's in stock. I mean, click it. It'll take you right to the product, and then I'll just boom, uh, add to car, and then yeah, I got my, I got my thing. Uh, it's no thanks. It's okay. So it's all good. It's all good. Uh, let me cancel this before everyone's like, what's happening? Your Discord is going crazy. So we got our Discord integration working, the notifications are there, and that's really it for this monitor. The next part will be packaging the monitor, so you can you know, maybe send it to your friend or use it on a separate computer. So we're going to do that in the next video. So thank you all for watching, peace. Welcome back everyone. So in this video, we will be packaging our application. So if you want to send it to your friend or um, anyone who wants to use your application, they can use it. So in order to do this, we will be using another library. Yes, we always, you know, we love our libraries. This is an NPM library called PKG package. And what this does is it helps you really package your application very simply. All you have to do is literally run this command and then run the command package space the file name. Um, they have it listed right somewhere here. Um, you know what? I'll just show you guys because I'm a pro. So we have this. Let's uh, run this command npm install g package, right? Um, let it install, just wait a bit. And once it's installed, all you have to do, and trust me guys, this is very simple. You just have to pkg, so package, and then the file name. So in this case, it's Amazon, right? So Amazon.js. You press enter. And if you don't specify a target, it packages the application to be distributed on Linux, Mac, and Windows. So if your friend has a Windows laptop and you're coding on a Mac like I am, you can just send it to them regardless. So uh, let's look at mine. You see right here, Amazon Mac OS. So to actually test it out and make sure everything's working, all you have to do is um. First, let me just copy this real quick. 
copy this. You don't have to copy this, but just this is just a test. You go to the folder that let me so you go to the folder where that your application's in. So Amazon Monitor. Um, you see the executables right here. So I'll go to the Mac OS one because I'm on a Mac. And there you go. It's asking you to enter the links to monitor. Um, I'm gonna do that. And obviously, guys, the weird error occurs, but it's whatever that error is. So now I'm monitoring two items. You see in stock in stock and we go to the discord and we will check now in the monitor so you got notifications we did you see right here 536 536 we got notifications and the program is working fine in a standalone application so now we can send this cli app to our friends and use it on a separate laptop and that is how you package your application node.js very simple very you know easy thanks to this package npm library and that is it for this video thank you all for watching Let's go! You have officially created an Amazon monitor using Node.js that can track if multiple items are out of stock or in stock. Now, I hope you learned a lot about Node.js, JavaScript, HTTP request handling, and more, and you can now use the same knowledge to create even more complex programs. And if you want to take your developing skills even further, I do have a mentorship program where I teach students how to create software automation projects as well as bots and sell them for thousands of dollars. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like so I know to make more tutorials like this for free. And if you want to join the mentorship program, check the email in the description below. And on that note, see you later.